How can we limit the password attempts to a certain number? We can do this using a variable to track the number of times the user has tried. In this IVR Studio tutorial, we will discuss variables. We will use the password protected example that we created in the last video to show how to declare, initialize, assign, and compare variables. We will be adding a wrong attempt counter to our application that when reached, logs the caller's caller ID name and caller ID phone number to a file and then hangs up. All variables must first be declared and initialized in the root element. This is done in the root element's properties. A variable, password count, is declared and initialized to zero in the incoming call element. From the action tab of the get password element, the password count variable is incremented by one. The wrong password entry condition has been reconfigured to allow entry only if the password count variable meets the condition of being less than 3. Finally, if the wrong password entry condition denies entry to the call flow, it will be handled by the log ID element, which is set to write the caller ID name and the caller ID number of the caller to a log file. Now we will save, validate, and deploy the call flow diagram. Right click the incoming call element and select properties. Select the Variable tab. The Variable tab is where all the user variables are declared and initialized. To add a new variable, click New. The variable we will add keeps track of the number of times a password loop is attempted. We'll call it Password Count. Here we initialize the value of Password Count to zero. With our Password Count variable declared and initialized, click OK. The Get Password is the first element in our wrong password loop. It is called initially in every time a wrong password is entered. This is a good place to increment our password count variable. Open the Get Password properties. The Action tab has a robust menu of tools that will allow the element to trigger several possible routines including run a program, call a Java method, interact with the HTTP protocol, manipulate a variable, and more. Select the Action tab. Click the New button to add a new action to the element. We need to increment our password count variable every time this element is called, so select the Set Variable Value radio button. Click OK. Here is a list of all of our declared variables. Select the Password Count variable. Here is where we increment the password count variable by adding 1. Click the OK button. Click the OK button. If the password variable is too high, we will need to stop allowing the call flow to move through the wrong password element's entry condition. It will need to move to a new element that we will create momentarily. First, let's reconfigure the wrong password's entry condition. Select Properties. Rather than always being true, we want to continue only if the password count is lower than a given value. To do this, we select the If the Condition is Met radio button. Now we'll define the condition. Select the combo box. Select Password Count from the list. Click the Add Variable button. Click the Less Than button. Now we enter a maximum wrong entry value of 3. Click the OK button. Make sure the Jump To element is set to Get Password. Click OK. Now we can add a new prompt element to the Get Password element, which will execute only if the wrong password maximum is reached. This element will not actually prompt anything. It will be set using the Action tab to record the caller's caller ID name and the caller ID phone number. It will then hang up on the caller. This way we can record the caller ID information about whoever may be trying to hack into the menu. This element will be set to always true because if it is reached, every call should be logged and disconnected. Click the next button. We won't play a prompt. You can add one here if you would like to. In this simple example, we will just hang up on the caller. Click next to enter the action window. Click the new button. Select the Log Message radio button. Click OK. Click the Add button. This is where we will create the string that will be printed out in our log file. This section will also introduce the use of system variables. 
the voicing gateway keeps a number of its own read-only variables that include the caller ID name and phone number, as well as other useful variables. In our log file, we want a mixture of both text as well as variables. Regular text needs to be wrapped in single quotes. We can also use the addition operator to concatenate our different values into one line on the log file. Select the VG caller ID name system variable. Select VG caller ID name. Click OK. Click OK. Select the Deploy menu. The Check Design Output window opens. Select the Deploy menu. Click OK to deploy the application. To access the log file that is created when the log ID element is executed, browse to C, Program Files, Voicent, Gateway, Apps, Password, logs.log, which can be opened with Notepad. This wraps up our lesson on using variables in IVR Studio. In the next lesson, we will allow a user who successfully enters the password to record a voice message.